What's going on guys? This is Francisco with Covenant Dispatch LLC and welcome back to my YouTube channel. If this is your first time visiting this channel, guys, do me a favor right under this video. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button right next to that subscribe button. Smash that like button so that this video can reach a more broader audience and help those looking for this kind of information. And lastly, hit that notification bell so that you can be alerted for when we post future videos and for when we go live and all that good stuff. Let's get right into the title of this video. I was actually excited putting this video together just because I, I think I wanna start a new series of videos on top of another new series of videos that I already started, but really just a new series of videos answering questions that people put in the comment section on some of my uh, YouTube videos. So some of the videos um, on, my, on my YouTube, uh, you know, I'm able to see the comments, but some of the comments I missed just because people you know, there's a lot of comments that come through. And so I saw this one recently that I want to put up here. And this is the comment that I'm going to answer. And you might even also see it in the thumbnail, but I'll put it up, up here in the video also. And the question is this, and it was on one of our most recent YouTube videos. And the question says, suppose you already have a full time job that your hours run into the middle of the night. Uh, can you still uh, consider being involved in this industry. So he's talking about uh, the freight dispatch industry and his name is, I believe, Robert. I mean, the YouTube name says Robert James 4422. So I'm assuming your name is Robert. So Robert, hopefully you're seeing this uh, video. Maybe I'll try to tag you under this one. I'm going to go ahead and answer your question here um, for this particular YouTube video. Before I continue, guys, I've been noticing how you guys who are already subscribed to our channel or are already know about us are taking advantage of the sale that we currently have. Now, on my last YouTube video, I talked about how we were going to do a sale um, taking off $100 of our one-time setup fee to join our Freight Dispatch Blueprint package. And a lot of you guys have taken advantage. And I love doing these sales just because it continues to grow the community of people that we have on our membership forum. And, you know, it's awesome. I'm just excited uh, for the people that are uh, joining now, and I'm excited for the future webinar videos and Q&A videos and workshops that we do in the future and really being able to help you guys launch your own at-home freight dispatch company. But for those of you who don't know, we do offer online trainings. Now, some of you have, have only maybe seen one or two of our videos and might say, man, Francisco, all you do is talk about your trainings. The reason why I bring it up in every video is because I always get people that ask me. So I'm just restating it in every video so don't you know if you're annoyed by that you probably you know you got problems anyway like why are you annoyed about what i'm you know reciting in my videos um if you go ahead and look at our reviews our you know content and everything like that be a judge of that versus what i'm saying repetitively in my videos so anyways i want to get right into this video but again we do offer online trainings and we are currently we, we extended that sale so in our last video I talked about how we were knocking off $100. The original one-time setup fee was $235, right? We knocked it down to $135, taking it off $100 for you guys to be able to join, again, our Freight Dispatch Blueprint package, which gives you access to all of our module videos, our carrier acquisition training, showing you how to get carriers, um, taking it to the next level in your marketing. And then you get access. You have to pay $15 monthly subscription payments if you want to get gain, continue access to the content in the course but then you get access to a membership only forum where you're able to it's like a private group on our website where you're able to network with other folks and you get access to all of our future webinar videos only for members who are a part of this package so again we're going to extend the sale i was only going to do it until sunday when i made the last video but guys I've been noticing a lot of people have been taking advantage and then, but we're going to go ahead and extend it for another couple of days. And I sent out an email. So if you want to join guys, it's, it's still available, um, on our website for only one thirty-five plus the $15 sub subsequent monthly subscription payments that you pay every month. And we're going to keep it like that for the next couple of days. I might even extend it until Friday. I don't know. Um, but I, I'm just excited as people are beginning to join and being able to work with you guys in the future. So go ahead and take advantage of that. Um, if you want to learn how to start an at home for a dispatch uh, company. So let's get right into the video. So the question is, can you work a full time job and dispatch freight? So I want to talk about three quick points here. Um, that I believe will give you more clarity on this, right? And the first point is this, because, you know, the question is, can you work full time and dispatch trucks? So there are so many different variables that go into answering that question. And I don't want to give the wrong one, uh, wrong ones. 
So I'm just going to give you three points. And you can base your particular situation uh, on these three criteria that I'm getting ready to list here. So the first thing is flexibility, right? Every one of us have different jobs that we do, right? If we're clocking in on a nine to five and every one of us have different flexibility in those jobs. Some of us are micromanaged. Some of us are uh, not micromanaged and, and, and we kind of just work, uh, a work at your own pace kind of job. Or maybe some of us have seniority and we've been at our job for so long that we're able to do, you know, we have flexibility. But the first criteria is flexibility. That's the first thing I want to bring up, right? As a dispatcher, my opinion, you should at least be available from the hours of 7 a.m. to 10 to 11 a.m. But let's just say 10 a.m., 7 a.m. to 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, Eastern Standard Time. So if you're on the West Coast, let's say California, Arizona, that means you have to be available from the times of 4 a.m. to 7 a.m. your time, which kind of works out in your favor, because if you live on the West Coast and let's say you work a first shift job, the load boards begin to become more active at around 7 a.m., let's say 6 to 7 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So that'd be anywhere from 3 to 4 a.m. on the West Coast, which means you might be able to get on there and find your carrier or carriers if there's just maybe one or two or three or something like that loads within that window of time and then be able to go to work and still do your work. And of course, there's a bunch of other variables that go into that. But hypothetically speaking, that would work for you more. It'd be more in your favor if you're on the west coast because you're able to wake up let's say at 4 a.m jump on the low boards try to get something booked by like you know let's say 5 5 30 a.m and then you could even go back to sleep take a cat nap and then go to your first you know shift job and if you have flexibility at your first shift job it makes it even better because you're able to check your phone and stuff which we're going to talk about but on the west coast you have a little bit more of an advantage in my opinion uh the other thing and i just mentioned it how flexible is your job in regards to not just time but being managed like are you micromanaged can you check your phone because as a dispatcher you do have to be available to answer the phone call for brokers and and uh and carriers <clears throat> you have to be available so that goes into your professional you know the professionalism um of your company you have to be available so if you have a flexible job then sure you could be able to do both and i'm going to keep on going and give you more points here um but you know flexibility and being able to check your phone that 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 plays uh into it as well another thing because you do have to be uh, available to answer calls and stuff like that it works both ways so <clears throat> whether the carrier is trying to call you or the freight broker is trying to call you you want to be available for both you don't want to like let's say prioritize just the carrier because you, you're building a rapport with not just carriers but also brokers so you want to make sure you, you're, you're available. So the, the second point is the structure of the carrier. What's the business model of that carrier? Do they drive over the road, OTR, regional, local? How, you know, what, what is the structure of their, set, of their company? An OTR carrier is a little bit more easier to dispatch because, especially if you have a full-time job, because let's say, for example, you have a carrier that likes to drive from coast to coast or they just drive all around, right? And let's say you book them on a load from California to New York City, right? I'm just going to say from coast to coast. That takes a few days to, get, to accomplish, so the shipper usually gives you a window of time to get that load delivered. That means I could book a load Monday and not have to worry for another load until, let's say, Wednesday or Thursday, you know. So it, it, really, it really just depends, but that gives you more, that gives you more flexibility and in, in your requirement of being on the load boards and booking loads and stuff like that. So it depends on the structure of the carrier as well. Again, I'm just giving you guys different variables. <clears throat> Uh, now let's talk about uh, uh, if your carrier is local. Well, if your carrier is local, it might require a little bit more of your time because let's say they pick up a load. It's only 100 miles away. Let's say even if you're on the West Coast, you book them at 4 a.m., but then they get it delivered by 5.30 a.m. You know, it's only like 80 miles or so. You got to find them another load or uh, for that particular day and on top of that, get them booked for the next day. Like, so it's more time consuming you're you're <clears throat> there's more um of a requirement of your time in that situation so it really just depends also on your carrier structure the structure of, of your carrier's business i want to go back a little bit to what i said about west coast versus east coast if you're on the east coast and let's say your first shift doesn't start till 9 a.m well maybe you're able to get up around seven and book a load within an hour's time which kind of depends on the equipment type and the demand in the region 
and you know it goes into those sorts of variables but i didn't want to like just discard those on the east coast i'm just saying on the west coast you kind of got a little bit more of an advantage because you can wake up a little bit earlier and still make it to your job but let's say most first shifts start around like let's say 7 6 a.m or 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 like 9 a.m 8 a.m so we talked about structure of the carrier that's the second point the third and the last point is this if those don't work for you you have a full-time job and those two situations uh points that i just made and all the different caveats i just gave you if those don't work for you the last option or the last thing i want to bring up is automation outsourcing so you can outsource and automate your freight dispatch company no different than you can outsource and automate a trucking company right so this is actually what i do right focus on investing on the marketing of your company to attract and solicit your services to carriers and owner operators so that your job is is overlooking the company investing in all the necessary things whether that's hiring a third party marketing company or maybe working on marketing a little bit yourself or taking a course on marketing or whatever and do the marketing for your company and then begin to plug the pieces in so you're doing the marketing you're getting leads and then find hire an experienced dispatcher now you can start off hiring them as a 1099 <clears throat> but you have to be careful of course and figure out the you know independent contractor uh, laws and regulations in your particular state but if you figure out a way to do it go get legal counsel of course you can hire them as a 1099 kind of following the the same model as a freight broker so if, if i have a freight brokerage company i can hire a freight broker agent under my company as a 1099 worker so you can kind of follow that same model and uh you know start you off that way where it's 100 percent commission based or maybe a small base pay and you know go ahead and ex ex hire experienced dispatchers um you know i'll give you an example um and then this is another thing too if you do go that route you want to make sure that you target good equipment types equipment types that are staying afloat in the current spot market you want to find like a flatbed for example or a reefer but you know equipment types that fluctuate but and then also on top of that stick to maybe maybe one to three equipment types you know i wouldn't like broaden my you know we do box trucks hot shots flatbeds reefers rgns like figure out maybe if you want to do reefer and flatbed for example and focus on that and then just go hard and slam your slam your the marketing department of your company slam it with marketing invest a lot into that into marketing and target those carriers i'll look at an example i'll give you an example one company i always like to bring up is truck trucker path right well known reputable company um that they, they do a plethora of different things in the trucking industry um and one of the things they've recently started to offer is dispatching services do you think that the owner of that company or the top key people hr of that company that they're the ones dispatching no they take advantage of the reputation they already have in the trucking industry they solicit their services through marketing ads and all that good stuff and then they find experienced dispatchers plug the pieces in and, and make money off of it so that's something that you could do if all the other options i may I, I said don't don't work out for you but you want to make sure because professionalism goes a long way if you got a good website put together you paid somebody you invested good money into it you have an email address a tie to your name not like abc dispatching at gmail.com but info at abc dispatching.com something like that with a good email signature you know uh uh uh, uh an address you know things that make your company appear to be reputable um an email signature incentives maybe you want to offer free dispatching for the first three trucks you know things like that right professionalism and how you structure and present your company those things go a long long way so and guys i'm looking off to the left because i got all my notes written down so i'm not you know just like looking off to, at something else this is the reason why i was looking so um, the only thing is, and with this particular option, of course, it's going to require a little bit more money, which a dispatch company does not have tons of overhead to begin with. So that's not something that you have to be, you know, like, man, I have to spend hundreds of or even tens of thousands of dollars. You can you can be able to do this under 5K, under even around like, let's say, 3K and still be able to slam your your mark, the marketing aspect of it. But you want to find a good marketing company or take a course and invest in yourself and learn the marketing. Um, but, guys, that's three different things that I wanted to bring up specifically for you, Robert, and maybe some of you else might have that same question on our Freight Dispatch Blueprint Package. Guys, we have a section outside of our typical module videos where it's, it's carrier acquisition training. And I think we have five module videos where we go in depth. We talk about SEO 
uh, marketing. We talk about Google ads, how you can tweak your website, how you can run Google ads, how you can do Facebook ads, Instagram ads, video ads. We talk about all those different things that will help you gain leads for your company, email marketing, SMS marketing, and all those different things. So, guys, we're going to run a sale again, like I said. It's going to be $135 one-time setup fee instead of $235, so we're, it's $100 off sale. Take advantage of that. We're going to extend it for the next couple of days because I see you guys are taking advantage of it. And the community's growing, and I'm, and, and it's awesome. And, and, and I can't wait to see a lot of you guys' different testimonials that we'll put up here on our YouTube channel. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Send it to someone that you know it might like. Don't forget to hit that like button so that this video can reach more people. And also, show love to some of our other videos. I, we, you know, we've been putting uh, reaction videos on articles and different things in the news, trucking news company. Uh, hopefully, by the time I upload this, upload this video, the next morning, uh, I'm going to upload another one that we saw on Freight Waves, an article about sexual abuse in the trucking company. I thought it was interesting, so I made a video on that. Go show those videos love, too. I know YouTube sticks to one niche, and if that if you're not making videos about that niche, you're not getting a lot of traffic. So I'm asking you guys to go show so, uh, some love to those videos because you know they're, they're, they're interesting, and I want to hear you guys' thoughts and comments on them. But, guys, other than that, I hope this video helped you again. I'll see you in the next one. If you want to access our trainings, um, that I mentioned earlier, the Freight Dispatch Blueprint Package. The link is in our bio, uh, in the description under this video. It's also pinned to our comment section. I'll see you guys in the next video.